الله وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسل عليه الأضحى and uh, then some of the rulings of the Uthiya or the Qurbani. So as we said uh, before, the unrestricted takbir has started from the very beginning of the Dhul Hijjah, but the restricted takbir started the day after Fajr, after every Salah, till the 13th of uh, Dhul Hijjah. Uh, unlike the Eid al Fitr, a person who wants to make the Qurbani, he should not eat anything before the Eid al-Adha prayer and eat if he, his Qurban is to be done the same day, try to wait until you eat from the Qurban. If not, at least after Salat. Yani after Salat al-Aid, not before Salat al-Aid, as it is first uh, Eid al-Fitr. Uh, it's the son of the Prophet Sallallahu to wear the best of the clothes, especially the white. Prophet Sallallahu used to like the white in Juma in all the uh, celebrations of the Eid. And uh, this is especially for the men and women they're supposed to wear the best of the clothes in front of their husbands. That's the best of their clothes. They can wear clothes, but fancy and all these colors and all the beautification uh, is, is not because that's, uh, it will attract uh, men. So it's not supposed to be done like that. Perfume for men, alhamdulillah for women. Women can put perfume inside of the house uh, in front of their mahram or in front of their, their husbands. I son of the Prophet to take ghusl as we do for Eid, for uh, Juma, we do for the same for Eid. Uh, Salatul Eid, there are two opinions of scholars. One, there is highly recommended. Another uh, opinion, actually three, one highly recommended. The other one is Fart Kifaya, which is if some people they do it, the rest it's an obligation to them. And the third one, which Allah knows best is most correct, is wajib, obligatory. That's a, a ruling for the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa, and Sheikh Hussam al Taymiyyah has chosen to be a, a correct opinion uh, for the Salat al to be an obligation, ayn, for every person who is an obligation to the Salat upon him. If Juma and Eid are on the same day, there is two opinions of scholars, so it's, uh, it's permissible to pray one of them, or both of them, they should uh, take place. Let's say that uh, it's permissible to pray. There is a, a hadith, it's permissible to pray one of them, but the Jum even in that case, the Juma has to be, uh, has to be prayed, not from everybody, but Juma will take place. And the Imam will pray the Juma in that day. Tahiyatul uh, Masjid, if the Eid is prayed outside, Musalla, uh, there is no Tahiyatul Masjid, but if it's prayed inside, like before the Salat al-Aid, obviously anytime you enter the Masjid, it's, uh, you have to pray to get to the Masjid or the greeting of the Masjid. From the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is to come for one route and to go for another route because you get a lot of rewards, giving salam to people, even uh, the, everything that you walk on that way will witness for you on your behalf on the day of the judgment. The greeting from the son of the Prophet so is to greet one another. Any words, but the best of the words are because any ibadah as in Islam, any celebration, we have it after an ibadah. And this was an ibadah of the days of the Hijjah. So we say may Allah accept your good deeds and, and our good deeds. And I mean, I mean, from among uh, from us and you, the good and righteous deeds. Eid Mubarak, may Allah bless you. You have a blessed Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give you blessing. Any dua that you can do, that's the, the blessing. Uh, best shaking hands, uh, maybe embracing. You could you could do that, uh, even embracing uh, one another or hugging one another. Uh, inshallah, that's for men, huh? men and women. No, unless they are Muslims. Yeah, that's uh, that's to be in. So that's from the sunnahs of of the Eid and Salat al-Eid, as we know, is two rakah, normal rakah, as you pray for Juma. 
And, uh, but the, the change is that we have seven more takbirat in the first rakah and five more takbirat in the second rakah. So the first rakah will have eight takbirat with the first takbirat of al-ihram and the second will have six takbirat with the takbirat of al the moving takbirat. And the salah, unless, like, not like the Juma, the salah is before and then the khutbah of a not like the Juma. Okay, so uh, that's regarding the, the Eid and the Sunnahs of Eid. What about the Udhiyah? Uh, may Allah Azza wa accept whoever has uh, bought, has the intention, inshallah. And the best is to do it yourself. And uh, the Udhiyah is any uh, animal from among the livestock, which is slaughtered on the day of Eid al-Adha, uh, due to Eid as an act of worship, by which one intends to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of the symbols and the rituals of Islam, and it's been legislated in Quran, Sunnah, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Ijma of the Ummah. Uh, majority of the scholars, they consider it, it, it is an emphasized Sunnah. The view of Imam Shafi, rahmatullah, the Imam Malik and Ahmad, is that, that, that do they have. Imam Abu Hanif, rahmatullah, alayhi, and other scholars they consider this obligatory obligation, and that's most correct opinion Allah knows best. Sheikh Muslim Tamiya takes this opinion too, which is for the person who has the means to. The person doesn't have the means, it's not obligation uh, for it. But the person who has the means, that's an obligation uh, regarding the hadith of the Prophet, whoever does not uh, uh, slaughter a qurbani, let him not come to our prayer uh, place. There is six conditions for the Udhiyah, for the Qurban. Number one, the, uh, the Qurbani or the sacrificial offering must be an animal from among cattle, which includes camels and cows or small, smaller livestock, such as sheep and goats. So no rabbits, no chicken, no rooster. These are not allowed, not permissibly. It's allowed for meat. You can eat it. Uh, but not for qurbani. Uh, it must have the, re the second required age that is in accordance with the religious standards, such as sheep, at least six months of age, goat, at least one year of age, cow, at least two years of age, and camel, at least five years of age. Number three, the animal must be, must be free of any defect preventing its slaughter from being valid and acceptable. There are four defects or four types, which are known. Number one, clear defects on, on the eye, like blind. Clear, number two, clear illness, very sick. Number three, clear limping. Little limping, no problem. It can walk, but clear limping, uh, yes. Number four, its weakness is very weak that even doesn't, doesn't have uh, the bone marrow. You know, usually if it's, a, it's an animal, good animal, it has the bone marrow in, in, inside of the bone and the spinal cord and everything. But this is very weak, so even the bone marrow, it's not there. It's a little bit, little bit of bone marrow. So that's uh, not acceptable. That they prevent. There are other uh, things which are more than this, which are mentioned in the hadith. So number, uh, number five, a blind animal that cannot see with both eyes. So if it's one eye, blind, it's not permissible. If it cannot see in both eyes, for sure, it's, it's more, it's not permissible. An animal uh, suffering from nausea uh, until it releases its load, its harm is removed. An animal that has been assisted in giving birth if natural delivery is difficult until the threat of danger is removed. An animal afflicted by something fatal, such as choking, falling from a high place, and so on, until the threat of danger is removed. If the threat of danger is removed, meaning to die, uh, there is no problem. A crippled animal, which is an animal that cannot walk due to a physical disability. Ten, an animal with one of its front legs or back legs broken. So if these are six are mentioned, you can add to those that are not permissible to be uh, a slaughter. Now, there are some other animals, it's good to, to mention, for example, some uh, that they have defect or people think that maybe it's allowed or not. For example, if, if the animal is preg pregnant, it's permissible or not, it is permissible. If it's pregnant, it is permissible. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are some that which are makruhan or uh, dislike. Uh, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, what you're to look, look at the eyes and the ears. Like the, the, the most important thing in the animal, uh, if they have defect, look at the eyes and the ears. For example, from this uh, you that make that not uh, permissible, for example, if the eye, the, if the ear is cut in the middle and from its width, or the ear is cut in the middle vertically, the ear of the animal, in that. Uh, from other, uh, that's it's called in Subhanallah in Arabic that every every one of those that has its uh, name. For example, the one where I said first, al muqabila shakat udunaha min al amani arba. The the ear it's it's cut by width, like horizontal, and, and then from front. If it's cut or it's vertical, it's called the sharqa. Al kharqa, the one. Who uh, you have, you have has uh, has been pierced in the in the the udum or the the ear. Al jamma, al jamma is called the one who has and it doesn't have the horns. It's allowed. Yes, it is allowed. It's allowed. But the sunnah, if you can have with horns, it's, it is better. Al abba. Most of the horns is gone, just a little bit left. It's permissible, but it's allowed. It's it, it is best to have the horns. A sam'a then has small uh, uh, small ears. It's permissible, but better is if it has. So, so each one of them they have the, the different names in, in Arabic. Subhanallah. Al hatma, al hatma is the one that all of the her teeth are gone. It's permissible or not? Yes, it is permissible. Obviously, but the better is to be complete. So actually, how the Prophet he, uh, what was the the Qurban of the Prophet As we know in the hadith of the Prophet that he ذَبَحَ شَاتَيْنِ أَمْلَحَيْنِ خَصِيَيْنِ تَحِلَيْنِ He uh, slaughtered two big rams, fat, Many aim with uh that they were fat with they were castrated. You understand? They were castrated. They say that castrated uh, ram has a better meat. That's what they, they, they say. So both of them they are castrated. Khasiyani, tahilani, tahilani that are the, the most that that uh, fit from an animal and a very good and uh, fat, a lot of meat. And nice, and they had horns, and they had horns, and the, those two that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sacrificed, they had their feet a little bit of blackness, and the knees a little bit of blackness, and the eyes a little bit of blackness. That's the the the, the, the two the rams of the Prophet of Islam. If you find any of those, Alhamdulillah, this is the best. But if you don't, doesn't matter. Even if it's black all, or it's white all, or it's in any any type of color. Unless uh, there is the rainbow, I understand. There's no rainbow. But uh, the color, uh, whatever is in the, the wool, no problem, inshallah. The Uthiya must be owned by the one slaughtering it. Or if not, he must have the right to slaughter it based on the religious grounds or the approval of the animal's owner. No other person's right that the fifth should be associated with the animal being slaughtered. For example, it's not valid to sacrifice an animal being held as a mortgage on a loan. You have given some, uh, somebody has given a loan you and you have your sheep staying with that and you go for the aid, I'm going to sacrifice. No, because that's a mortgage. I mean, mortgage, I'm talking about halal, you know, not uh, with riba. Number six, condition. The animal should be slaughtered in a specific time frame, which is uh, after Salat al aid till the 13th uh, day of the Hijjah, which is for four days, that till the Maghrib of that day. What is the Udhiyah or suffice for? One sheep is sufficient for a family, one goat is sufficient for a family, one seventh of a camel or a cow is sufficient for one family, 
This means that up to seven individuals on behalf of their families may participate in slaughtering of one camel or one cow. The most preferable type of obhe, the best types of animals for slaughter are camels, then cows, if they are slaughtered on behalf of one person, and one family, one camel, one uh, uh, and one cow. That's the best. Then sheep, because it's for one family, then goats, one family, then camels if slaughtered on behalf of seven people, then cows if slaughtered on behalf of seven people. Mashallah, the Bengali brothers are like the cows, along the back, always. Yeah, anyway, but there is no problem. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept from everybody. Uh, regarding appearance and qualities, the best animals for slaughtering are the ones with most fat, meat, and wholesome, some attributes of the best appearance. Uh, if you chose an animal, like a, a sheep, a cow, or a goat, and a few days before the eight, now there's no time, but maybe you chose one. You do it before the eight. It's, an, it's permissible, and you and this soon of the Prophet is that you, you sign, you put a sign for that, that's yours, and uh, alhamdulillah. And obviously, most of you have chosen uh, I guess that. So can you change? Can you get another one instead of that? If it's better, yes. If it's worse, weak, no. If it's better, you can change for better. You can change it. Or better. Where do you get that? One time the Prophet وسلم, a man told him that I have I have vowed that uh I will gonna pray in Masjid al Aqsa. If Allah Azza wa give you victory and all oh, this is the threat from Mecca, if I'm not mistaken, said I will pray in Masjid al Aqsa. Prophet وسلم, told him, Salli ha huna. Pray here. Where? Medina, Masjid al Nabi. He repeated again, Ya Rasulullah, I have vowed to pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Prophet Sallallahu told him, Salliha huna, pray here. He repeated again. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, as you wish. You want to pray there, pray there. But here we say that the Prophet told him because here the, masjid, the prayer in the Masjid of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 1,000 salah. So it's better in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Masjid Al-Aqsa is good too. But uh, there is better. So that's why the Prophet told him, Pray here. So from here we get the ruling that if you are going to do an ibadah and uh, you, you can change to something which is better by not going down. What should be eaten and distributed from the Udhe? The skull is different on the amount should be eaten, presented as a gift and given charity. At the end of the day, it's allowed, permissible to eat, even if you eat the whole thing. As long as you do it for the sake of Allah, so again, it's even if you eat for a whole thing or you give the whole thing. Uh, but scholars, they have and said it's better if you do it in three parts. Yeah. One uh, you for yourself, and one as a gift for family and friends, and one and as a sadaqah or charity to the people. Uh, if person, as we talked before, that if you are to uh, slaughter the animal, Qurbani, uh, the person who intends to slaughter, obviously for the beginning of the hijjah, as the Prophet told, you should not take from his uh, nails or hair, uh, anything until he slaughters his qurbani or old hair. Some people were asking, as actually the, the question was from someone, when should we uh, trim? That's the that question in general. When should we trim our beards and clip our nails and uh, they clip our nails, yes, eh? for a uh, because we're doing the qurbani. And I said, first of all, trimming the beard. <laughs> other than less than one fist is not permissible neither in Eid or after Eid or before Eid. So leave that alone. Clipping your nails and having a haircut and so, that starts uh, after you slaughter your Qurbani or Udhiyya. Okay, so that's not the night of Eid. It's not that some people think, oh, it's night of Eid. No, it's not. It's not after you slaughter your Qurbani. Uh, regarding the, the person who, who is doing the qurbani himself, he is the one who is supposed to uh, uh, take, meaning that to stop himself from, from uh, taking from his hair or his skin or clipping his uh, nails. Not the, the family. Family members, there is no problem. I mean, they can do that during the uh, days. There is no problem for that. Conditions of slaughtering. Number one, the person performing the slaughter must be sane at the age of tamiz and discernment. Number two, the person performing the slaughter might be, must be either a Muslim 
or a kitabi. Obviously, the kitabi is the, that you uh, are a Jewish or Christian. Uh, if you put him as a wakil, appointing him to, to slaughter on your behalf, not he's not doing uh, qurbani for Aid yani, for himself, but uh, that's uh, permissible. Uh, that one, uh, number three, he makes his intention to slaughter the animal. Slaughtering is exclusive action that requires an intention. You have to make an intention for that. So if the person who just slaughters without the intention, it's not permissible as qurbani. Yani, that. The sacrifice should not be done for other than the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One must not mention anyone's name over the sacrificial offering except for Allah's name. One must mention the name of Allah over the sacrifice. Bismillah. Uh, say like Bismillah. Allahumma hadha minka ulek. Allahumma taqabban min. Bismillah, name of Allah. Oh Allah, this is from you and for you. Oh Allah, accept it from you. That's to add, but Bismillah has to be there. The slaughter must be performed using a sharpened tool that causes the blood to flow. Such a tool can be made from iron, stone, glass, or another material. The blood must be allowed to flow, uh, flow, uh, flow out of the animal when slaughtering it. Number nine, the one slaughtering must have valid authority to slaughter the animal and uh, give him permission. Etiquettes of slaughtering, he should face the kibla with the animal at the time of slaughtering. He must slaughter the animal in good manner, which is by quickly and firmly passing a sharpened blade over the neck area. The slaughter of the qurbani of a camel must be done by cutting the area just below the neck and above the chest. That is called a nahab. That's like, salli rabbika, one As all types of other animals, the neck, their neck should be slit. A camel should be slaughtered while standing with its front left leg tied. It is if it's difficult to be done this way, the camel can be slaughtered while kneeling. But the best is that that's why it's called nahr. As for all other animals, they are to be slaughtered while lying flat on their left side. If the one slaughtering is lefty, he may use his left hand and lay the animal down on its right side. This is so long as do doing this is easier for the animal and more convenient for the one slaughtering. It's also prescribed as the Prophet have done it to place his foot on the animal's collar to give him better control and, and the, the cheek. Number four, the throat and the esophagus of the animal should be cut in addition to the jugular veins. The blade, number five, should be concealed from the view of the animal when sharpening it. This means an animal should not see the blade until the time of the actual slaughter. As the Prophet mentioned, if they show the blade, they said you have slaughtered it two times because already got scared from the blade and then when it's slaughtered. So that has an uh, effect, impact in the, in the meat too. Number six, one should glorify Allah subhanahu by saying Allah Akbar, Bismillah, Allah Akbar at the end. After mentioning his name, saying Bismillah when slaughtering. Uh, after mentioning Allah's name and glorifying him, one should name the person for whom the sacrificial offering is being performed. Like for example, you're doing for yourself, that Bismillah, Allah minka, this is from me, and my family, and that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi slaughtered two. For one of them, he said, this is for Muhammad, Ali Muhammad, the family of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He slaughtered for us too, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are some of the rulings of the Uthiyah. Uh, I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to accept from all of us and ask Allah Azza wa to uh, grant us his riba, his pleasure. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Allah, ask Allah Azza wa to make it easy for all of us and all the ummah Islamia, all the ummah of Islam, anywhere and everywhere they are. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbil alameen. La ilaha ila anta subhanak inna kuna minal zalimeen. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikeen. La ilaha ila anta subhanak inna kuna minal zalimeen. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikeen. Allahumma ansur al-mustadha'afina fi Gaza wa Filistin wa fi Sudan fi kulli makani yudhkar ismuk al-kareem. Allahumma ya rabbal alameen at'am jiyaahum. Allahumma ya rabbal alameen irham mawtahum. Allahumma shafi mirdahum. Allahumma shafi mirdahum. Allahumma alayka bi adaihim adaihim hada al-deen al-sahainat al-zalimeen. Allahumma alayka bihim fa'innahum la ajizunak. اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر وجعلهم عبرة لمن يعتبر اللهم لا تحقق لهم غاية ولا ترفع لهم راية يا حي وقيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين اللهم عز هذا الدين اللهم عز هذا الدين اللهم عزنا وعز المسلمين يا رب العالمين صلى الله على نبينا محمد صحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك